new motorcycle tech and of course the bikes we'll find ourselves riding over the coming years is without a shadow of a doubt a sticky bone of contention amongst traditionalists and the tech savvy riders of tomorrow. Let's face it, it's not long ago that most of us would have imagined Harley would have needed to be dragged kicking and screaming into the electric motorcycle revolution. Go figure that one if you can. But with a relentless march of motorcycle technology ever moving forwards, it's only a matter of time until the tech dominates out over tradition. That's why today we're going to take a closer look at what's already knocking at the door when it comes to motorcycle tech and also a quick peek at what's just around the corner. Welcome to Road Rash TV. Now whether you like it or not, motorcycles are definitely getting smarter and with the impending electric takeover, innovations such as hubless rim motors, full screen TFT dashboards and advanced crash avoidance systems are no longer a thing of the past. And get this, we've even got flying bikes being tested right now by police forces. But all that aside, are they really a substitute for the feel and smell of grease and petrol? Take for instance the amount of money that's being pumped into self-balancing bikes by companies like Yamaha, Honda and BMW. Now although at this stage the level of tech involved in keeping you upright is only suitable for speeds of around, ooh, say 3 miles an hour, believe me when I say this, if they can work out how to make you more stable when you've got your knee down, or how to stop that dreaded tank slap in its tracks, now that's something no one can deny is a good thing. Ducati are also gearing up for the smart bike revolution with its aptly named Zero e-bike that was first announced back in January of 2019. Now although the Zero is still only in R&D stages, if Ducati can pull it off and get this bike into production sometime soon, it will definitely force the hands of all other large bike manufacturers to get their act into gear. So electric is one thing. But if we look just a little further around the corner, hydrogen may be on its way, as bikes like the Apex H2 are currently being designed that boast a top speed of 150 km an hour, a 0 to 100 of under 4 seconds and a power output of 60 kW. Now although some of you will undoubtedly be thinking, they don't know how to make motorcycles, and you may be right, apart from one small thing. Ninebolt, the company that's recently bought Segway, has just been given an initial $80 million shot in the arm from the ultra-massive Chinese tech giant Xiaomi to get it done and into production by 2023. Now as you can see the H2 is a stunner as it has an ultra-modern Tron-like appearance with two single-sided swing arms to give the bike the appearance of floating on air and is powered by two hydrogen fuel cells that produce nothing but power and water. Now clearly electric motorcycles may seem like an unsavoury concept to some, but they are quickly becoming a popular option for bike riders around the globe. And there are actually a few benefits from owning one. Take for instance the 100% instant torque and power you get from an electric motor that can provide you with the sort of rapid acceleration that a fuel powered bike has no chance of keeping up with. Not to mention the delivery of all that torque is linear, which unfortunately also means you won't get the surge feeling that you get with a petrol powered bike. And personally, I would miss that, as I think a lot of you would too. Less maintenance. An electric bike's got no plugs, pistons, exhausts, filters, carbs, fuel and no oil. What it does have, however, is one moving part. That's right, just one. It's electric motor. Some electric bikes won't even have a gearbox or clutch. So if you're the type of biker that likes to get his hands dirty, and the smell of grease and petrol, and also spending hours with his mates trying to find new ways of getting the bikes to go faster, then the thought of an electric bike is probably making the hairs on the back of your neck stand on end. However, on the other hand, if you're the type of person that just wants to set it and forget it, then you'll probably be in hog's heaven with a smart bike. Now I'm sorry about this, but I am going to have to mention that electric bikes are naturally much quieter than petrol powered bikes. And that to me is a massive negative, as I personally love the throaty growl of a four-stroke. However, I do get it that some people may find the noise that some bikes produce to be a bit antisocial. And I also can't disagree with that. But I will say this, that's often down to the owner and not the bike. So what are the disadvantages of owning one? Well, they're a bit expensive, aren't they? Well, if you can't afford one, you can't afford one. There's just no getting away from that. However, if you can stretch to the initial outlay, you will make a significant saving over the long run by missing out on expensive servicing, maintenance and repair charges. You also may qualify for some sort of government incentive depending on where you live. And I'm telling you now, you're vastly going to reduce the fuel running costs of your bike, as electric definitely costs only a fraction of the money that petrol does. And without going all green on you, they are better for us in the long run, you know. Now at the moment, there isn't a massive range of smart motorbike designs and styles available. And what there is on offer can seem well, a little bit over the top when it's compared to a petrol powered bike price. Not to mention the elephant in the room being the range your average smart bike can cover. 
finding somewhere to recharge it and waiting around while it does. However, there are changes afoot that will eliminate all of these pitfalls. With a ton of electric bikes in different designs and styles being created and scheduled for release as we speak, that incorporate a vastly increased range, and let's not forget as the number of electric motorbikes continue to increase, the price will naturally drop to a level we're more accepting of. Now look, don't get me wrong here, because in no way, shape or form and under no circumstances am I trying to tell you that a smart electric powered bike is better than a more traditional petrol powered model. I'm simply stating that they are on the way, whether you like it or not, and not all of the tech involved is always bad. Take for instance bikes like the Ox One and the Damon Hypersport that have started to incorporate advanced vehicle avoidance software and when detected can alert the rider enabling them to take the necessary action needed to stay safe. And to be honest with you, whether it's on electric or petrol, it is a good thing. I would like as many of you guys as possible to leave a comment whether or not that you think some of the tech involved on these bikes is good or not. Subscribe down here for more weekly related bike stuff. And if you do like bike tech, one of these two videos here is probably good for you to watch next. My name's Bobby Max. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm out of here.